Hi, my name is Yalani Simon. And as part of the New Energy Analysis Methods for Natural Data Educational Course, I'll present today an application of using Euclidean distance to test for differences in the response of different brain networks. I use intersonic correlation to test the regions that are involved in processing of naturalistic stimuli. However, in the project I'll, test, I'll present today, I was interested in the differences in the brain response between different people, and specifically in quantifying the difference in the brain response between different brain networks. To quantify the difference in their response, I used Euclidean distance between the mean response of participants. We developed this method during my postdoc in Princeton, working with Uri Hassan. And in this presentation, I'll give an example of a project in which we use this method. In this project, we ask how the brain translates small differences in the input into big difference in the narrative. Small differences in the words we use can generate a large difference in the meaning. For example, and this is an example I gave during SFN 2016, a few days after Trump was elected, I can say he built a wall. They did not pay for it, a big surprise. I can also say she built a wall. They did not vote for her, a big surprise. And by changing three out of 13 words, I change the narrative from talking about Trump and his wish to build a wall on the border with Mexico to a narrative about uh, Hillary Clinton building a metaphorical wall between her and her voters. And in this project, we ask how the brain translates small difference in the input into big difference in the narrative. And specifically, we ask if there's a gradient in the response difference from early sensory regions to higher order regions. To answer this, I would first like to introduce the concept of hierarchy of type scale. Ul Hassan's lab recently suggested that all cortical circuits can accumulate information over time and that the time scale of accumulation varies from early sensory regions with short crossing time scales of tens to hundreds of milliseconds equivalent to the articulation of a phoneme or a word to regions with medium crossing time scale uh, that accumulate information over a few seconds equivalent to a few words or a sentence up to high order areas with long crossing time scale of many seconds to minutes, which is equivalent to a few sentences or a paragraph. The processing time scale hierarchy leads to the prediction that the longer the processing time scale of a region, the bigger the difference between the stimuli. If we'll go back to, um, to our example, um, so um, the idea is that there is a relatively small difference in voxels that integrate over phonemes or words as only three out of the 13 words were changed. And there's a relatively larger difference in voxel integrating information over a couple of words or a sentence as two out of the three sentences were different. And there will be even larger difference in voxel integrating information over a few sentences or paragraphs as the whole paragraph is different. So our hypothesis was that small changes in response of short time scale regions will be amplified as progress along the processing area. In order to test this hypothesis, we compared the neural representation of two stories with the identical structure, though one to two words within each sentence were changed. The two stories were read by the same app. The first story, the first story started like this. The situation seemed almost hopeless, and after he spent most of the last week's drinking, he knew he must confront the truth. The second story starts like this. The situation seemed too good, and after she spent most of the last week's worrying, she knew she could enjoy the moment. The first story was about Thomas, that recently broke up with his girlfriend, Emily, but he's still obsessed with her. And after meeting a hypnotist, 
This is replaced by fixation on a Milky Way and there is a happy ending. And the second story is about Rachel that reaches the finals of American Idol and is obsessed with the judge, Simon. After meeting his psychic, this is replaced by fixation on vodka and there is a sad ending. And you can see that relatively small differences in the words used generated large difference in the narrative. And from now on, I'm going to call the first story the Milky Way story, and the second story the vodka story. So I was interested in quantifying the difference in the neural response between these two stories. For doing so, I calculated the distance in the Euclidean distance between the uh, mean responses for the two stories. First, we defined voxels that were involved in processing the stories by testing for voxels with significantly high within intersubject uh, correlation for the Milky Way story and for the vodka story. Then, in each of these voxels, we extracted the time courses of the 18 participants that listened to the Milky Way story and the 18 participants that listened to the vodka story. We then calculated the mean response of the Milky Way story in this specific voxel and the mean response of the, of the vodka story in this specific voxel. Finally, we calculated the Euclidean distance between these two mean time courses. This resulted in a Euclidean distance value for each of the voxels that were involved in processing the story. We then sorted the voxels according to their Euclidean distance and divided them into five beans, the first with the smallest difference in the neural response and the last with the largest difference in the neural response. We wanted to see where these beans are located in the brain. This is the map of the distance in the neural response between the two stories. In lighter colors are voxels that had a relatively small difference in the brain response between the two stories, and in darker colors are voxels that had a relatively large difference in their response. You can see that the early sensory regions had relatively small difference in their response and that this difference got larger and larger in higher order regions. To give you a sense of this effect, some of the high order regions, uh, such, as, such as bilateral TPJ, had a difference that was 10 times larger than the difference in early sensory regions, in early sensory auditory cortex. Next, we wanted to test our prediction that the distance between the two stories will be related to the processing time scale hierarchy. This is a map of the processing time scale that varies uh, from voxels with short time scales in light colors to voxels with long time scales in darker colors. This map was defined by the comparison of an impact stories to the word scramble version of it done by Yulia Lerner in 2011. Okay, this was an independent data set. This map is the map of the distance in the neural response between the two stories, between Milky Way and Vodka, defined in our current experiment. We can see by eye that there is a striking similarity between these two maps that were generated by two independent data sets. And indeed, what you see here is that there was a significant positive correlation between the neural distance between the two stories and the voxel processing time scale. So the longer the processing time scale of a voxel, the larger the difference in the response to the two stories, to the difference between the brain response to Milky Way and vodka stories. So we found this amplification map when the distance was defined by comparing the responses to the whole story. We wanted to test whether this amplification pattern is not a result of just one part of the story, but holds true for different parts of the story. For them, the author of the story divided the story into 12 scenes. And we calculated the average response difference in each of the five beams to each of the scenes. So we did so by calculating the Euclidean distance between the mean response of voxels with, within a certain mean between each scene in the story. And one can do so uh, also for each sentence in a story or each event in a movie. 
So here we did it for each scene in the story. And let's look at the first scene. We started the beginnings based on the distance in neural response between the first scene of each story. Um, so we found the same pattern of amplification as the one we found across the whole story. As you can see, it goes uh, in a gradient between lighter color to darker color. We also found this amplification pattern for the second scene, and it was actually true for 11 out of the 12 scenes. Only in the last scene, uh, we see that there was a small gain in this ranking. So we know that this amplification difference was not due to one part of the story, but was actually holding true for the vast majority of the story. So we observed um, the increasingly divergent neural response across the science of processing hierarchy during the processing of two distinct narratives that vary only in small number of words. So for example, changing almost hopeless to too good, changing he to she, changing drinking uh, to worry. However, it could be that any change in the words we would be amplified from early sensory regions to higher order regions. We wanted to test whether this gradient is due to the change in the narrative. To test this, we added a new condition, the Milky Way synonyms. Milky Way and Milky Way synonyms had the same grammatical structure and differed in the exact same number of words as the original Milky Way and Vodka. However, for Milky Way synonyms, we replaced words with their synonyms, so for example, hopeless with desperate, or uh, between it was time to face reality to he must confront the truth. And we um, replaced a few pronouns with their proper nouns, for example, between he, we changed it to Martin. And we preserved the semantic and narrative content in the two stories. This allowed us to ask, if the amplification of difference is dependent on forming distinct narratives? And the answer is yes. Amplification of difference is dependent on forming distinct narratives. We see here that the amplification pattern between, uh, when we compare between two different narratives, Milky Way and Vodka. However, when we compare between two similar narratives, Milky Way and Milky Way synonyms, we did not get the simplification of this. More so, when comparing two different narratives between Milky Way and Vodka, we found a positive correlation between crossing time summary depths and the very small difference between the two stories. However, when comparing between similar narratives, Milky Way and Milky Way synonyms, we did not get this correlation. And if, if anything, we see a negative correlation. It's caused by these voxels. It is interesting to note that this voxel that has a relatively large difference between Milky Way and Milky Way synonyms are located in primary auditory cortex. And this makes sense as, for example, the difference between he and she for the auditory cortex is relatively small, whereas the difference between he and she in higher order regions that are involved in narrative comprehension might be relatively large. On the other hand, the difference between he and Martin to the auditory project is relatively large, whereas the difference between he and Martin to higher order regions involving narrative comprehension might be relatively small as he and Martin refers to the same character. Our recent question um, was how do we translate small differences in the input into big differences in the narrative? We suggest that local change in the input structure is amplified along the processing timescale hierarchy to generate a big change in the main. I would like to emphasize that this phenomenon in which small changes in the input generate a big difference in the narrative is ubiquitous. So a small change in the mouse and nose angle makes you understand if a person is angry or disgust, a small change in the intonation makes you understand if someone is lacking with you or at you, a small change in hand pressure can differentiate comfort from threat. So these results suggest an optional neural mechanism underlying this phenomenon. 
And with that, I would like to thank you. And I'd be happy to keep discussing this method if you have any thoughts or questions. So just email me uh, at this email address. And thank you. <laughs>